Well, this week all eyes will be on the stars and not Hollywood, but outer space because NASA is aiming again for planet Jupiter. You may recall NASA launched this Juno spacecraft a few years back. Well, that spacecraft had to do a fly around the Earth because it recently started uh, falling back to our planet so that you can get a swing out to uh, Jupiter. Bill Nye is the science guy and joins us live from Los Angeles. Bill, let's get right to it. We're, uh, we want to know why Jupiter. Why is Jupiter so interesting and, and worth studying? Well, Jupiter might almost be a star. This is to say huh. whatever Jupiter's made of is the same stuff that you and I are made of and the same stuff that came out of stars. Well, I'm made of marshmallows and goo, I'm pretty sure. That's not Jupiter. I'm, I'm... This spacecraft is... Well, you're made of carbon and oxygen and nitrogen and all these happy things, phosphorus, iron. All these things come from exploding stars. It is a remarkable thing that we should all take a moment and appreciate. And Jupiter is... This, we are is, made of stardust. Is, we are made of the stuff of stars. I, you're going to freak me out now if you keep up that sort of talk because I can't, uh, I can't take that into my head. Jupiter is a gas giant. It is a massive planet way out in the middle of, of, of nowhere, 450 million miles to get there. It's not an easy place to get to. This, the Juno's had to go around Mars for a little gravitational swing and then Earth and then boomerang it out to Jupiter. Is that how it works? Well, past the orbit of Mars. I see. So one and a half times the distance to the Earth to the sun. So you buy, strange as it seems, when you do a mission like this, you're on a budget. So you buy a rocket that's off the shelf. So this really is rocket science. These guys sent this thing. I went down to Cape Canaveral in 2011, sent this thing out beyond the orbit of Mars, fell back toward the Earth, and it's going to take the tiniest bit, or it took the tiniest bit of the Earth's orbital motion to give it a slingshot out to Jupiter, and it'll arrive there in 2016. The things in space are so extraordinarily far apart, it's hard for most of us to appreciate. But just look at, the, at your clock, 2011 to 2016. It's a long time just I, to get there. I love this stuff. There's probably never been a better time to study space and to look at what's out there than right now. And one of the guys who uh, was a pioneer, Scott Carpenter, who, uh, who, who died this week, could you give us your thoughts on, on him, space exploration, and where we're all going? Well, for me, guys like that from the first, uh, the first U.S. Uh, civilian uh, Mercury guy, people who flew in space, inspired me. I mean, the reason I became mechanical engineer, aerospace engineer, was because of <clears throat> the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo program. And this gets, I mean, Scott Carpenter represents for me the inspiration that comes from space exploration. Now, you can talk about that quite a bit. You can talk about how it inspires us, makes us reach for the stars, and so on. But the economic effects are direct. And for me, uh, Scott Carpenter's death just highlights it. This is to say the latest number is 3.6. For every dollar that you put into the space program, you get $3.60 back. And the other thing you get is innovation. We would not have smartphones. We would not have uh, global positioning systems. Absolutely. We would not have commercials ba based on jokes about your nav system in your car without the space program. Great we would stuff. not be able to feed as many people as we feed without the space program. The passion and is... So there is an irony that the government is shut down right now while this spacecraft the... uh, continues to fly uh, undeterred. The passionate Bill Nye, my, my homeboy from Los Angeles. Thank you very much. Always great to see you.